Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about the assert statement. A uh, question was brought up in my stream, which was, hey, what is assert? And should I use it instead of exceptions? And um, is it a security problem? And I figured I would talk about all of this, address all of those things here. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so at its core, at its basics, um, what assert is, if we make a little file here. Uh, if we do assert and then some expression, um, this translates to if not expert raise assertion error in the in the general case. Uh, we'll talk about some special cases where it doesn't generate code that looks like this, um, but this is how you can think of the assert statement. Uh, the assert statement also has another form where you can pass a second expression here. Um, and note here that this is a statement, so it's not a function. So if you parenthesize stuff here, it does not do what you expect. This parenthesized version here will always return true uh, because this is a tuple and that gets evaluated as a tuple and tuples are always truthy. So this check here will always be, oh, we forgot a colon there, will always be true. Um, but there's a, a second forum where you have two statement arguments. They're not like function arguments. They're more, they're more just like uh, specialized statement stuff here. Uh, this second form will uh, evaluate instead as if not expert raise assertion error uh, expert two. And so this second expression is often used to uh, specify a message inside this assertion error. So if we did some concrete examples here, let's say x equals one. Uh, if we did assert x equals equals one, uh, and you did if not x equals equals one, you would get uh, a blank assertion error here. So we get actual syntax here. Um, and if we did if x equals equals one, um, expected one, but got x equals, uh, this is special f string syntax that will print out the variable name as well as the representation of its value. Uh, and this one translates to if, uh, we gotta parenthesize these. If not x equals equals one, then raise assertion error expected one, but got x equals. Okay, so that's that's what assert is. Um, the syntax is just kind of a shorthand for this. I find that it's most useful in tests. And um, actually, if we, if we look at this code here, uh, there's actually kind of a problem with kind of your raw assert statements here. So if I did assert x equals equals one, and I don't have an expression here. Uh, when this fails, it's gonna be really hard to see what error happened here. So if we run this now with just that first chunk of code, you'll see that we get x equals equals one. We get an assertion error, but it doesn't tell us anything about x. Uh, so I find that, you know, if you're writing, if you're writing assert statements and you're not using a framework like PyTest, uh, which I'll show you in a second. PyTest actually does some really cool magic to this uh, by rewriting the bytecode. Uh, actually, I guess it rewrites the AST and then it gets compiled. Anyway, it rewrites the source so that this has very, very different behavior. Uh, by default, if you don't specify a message here, that's what you're going to get. So if we, let's uh, comment this out. Uh, but if we specify a message here, you'll see that we get uh, you know, an assertion error that has a nice message here. That way uh, someone could debug this at runtime. Uh, so my, my rule of thumb is if, if, you're, if you're writing assert, uh, assert statements, always specify a message to make it readable unless the expression is 100% you know, obvious. Like for instance, one obvious expression is like assert x is none or is not none. Um, so this, you know that X always has to be none if this assert, assert statement is hit, for instance. Um, and so you might not need a message there. Uh, the other case where you don't need a message is if you're working in PyTest. Um, because what PyTest does, let's put this into a test and we'll show you the version without the uh, special message there. Uh, let me get rid of the rest of this here. Pip install pytest and pytest t.py. Uh, you'll see that pytest actually generates a, you know, a more readable assertion error here. Um, actually, what happens if you do tb equals native? Does it still do? Yeah, it still does. So it's changing the actual assertion code here. 
Um, this is PyTest special traceback stuff. If you get rid of PyTest special traceback stuff, you can see that it's you know generating an assertion error that tells you why it why that particular assert statement failed. So there's some special magic in PyTest. We can actually look at that magic. Um, if we break point here and import our friend the disassembler. Uh, and we look at the code here, and you can see there's actually a ton of code that gets generated, even for this, you know, very... Oh, let's actually get rid of the second one, so it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of code there. Import dist, 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 dist test. Yeah, you can see there's all of this code that gets generated here. Uh, and that's because PyTest is building up a representation of this, you know, assertion error so that it can produce that nice message that we get there. Uh, and it stores a bunch of variables in these... Uh, at prefixed variable names so that you can't reference them normally. Um, and then eventually, you know, formats this out and uh, gives you the, the nice assertion message. So anyway, that's that's PyTest asserts. Uh, now, the, the first question here is like, when should I use assert versus an actual, you know, guarding method here? Uh, and I think for me, the distinction there is I like to use asserts when I am being a defensive programmer. So I'm writing down some assertion that I expect as a programmer uh, and it should never fail. Um, I'm not trying to guard my library against inputs from a, a third party. I'm trying to guard my program against itself, so to speak. Uh, and, and one of the reasons for this is, is asserts can actually be turned off in code. So if we take this same code here and we uh, call test here, and I'm just going to call this with Python 3 t.py, uh, you'll see we do hit this assertion error here. But if we do dash o, which turns on optimizations in Python, <laughs> which is kind of funny, all it really does is delete doc strings and turn off assert statements, as far as I recall. Um, oh, does it have to go, it has to go before the file name? Yeah, so if we, if we call Python with dash O, it's going to turn off the assert, assert statements. Now, um, some people will claim that because you can turn them off, this means that it's a security issue. I actually find this argument to be very, very weak. Um, I don't think this is a, a security problem, so to speak. That said, you probably shouldn't be using asserts to guard security sensitive code. Uh, the reason that I don't really think this has much merit is nobody runs with dash o in Python because it doesn't actually make your code... Well, one, it doesn't actually make your code faster, and sometimes it can cause correctness issues with, like, missing doc strings or, or other stuff like that. Uh, for instance, there's a bunch of libraries that use presence of doc string to, uh, you know, generate argument parsing information or other stuff like that. And, um... Yeah, if the, if, if the doc strings are, are uh, compiled out, then you obviously wouldn't get that. Um, but yeah, I think that covers all the things that I want to cover about assert. Uh, if there are additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.